Hi everybody, I did a little bit of live uh, filming um, and part of that was one of these little sketches and I did promise that I would show you the finished article. So what I thought I would do is I've obviously done a bit more drawing on it since the live, um, the live um, video but I started to finish it and I thought well I might as well um, share it with you whilst I'm drawing it so I've set this little bit of a a tripody thing up it could go horribly wrong because I can hardly actually see the picture um, because I'm behind it so what I'm going to do is some of my cross hatching ballpoint pen work and have a little chat and hopefully sort of where I can remember to is explain to you what it is I'm doing and why I'm doing it so I'm putting in some foliage effects here and all it is is a little case of going up and down up and down up and down you see nothing special so we're going to just add these in and what you need to think about is your composition the door here is obviously inside the tree so it's not going to be sticking out of the tree you want it to look as though it's actually inside and underneath the branch so I've added quite a bit more shading here to give the effect that it's further back and hidden underneath inside the tree more rather than sticking out. It's a case of thinking about your lighting and shading here. So I'm gently just doing a crosshatch effect. It's only very, very light. The more crosshatching you do by crosshatching, I mean, you literally cross over your pencil points. There's a demonstration there, which I hope you can see. You literally cross over. The more you cross over, the darker the section you keep going over will become. So if I just keep going over that little bit there, that will become darker than the bit below it, which I haven't added quite so many cross hatches to. It's a technique that they used to use for copper plate um, drawings for, for making uh, printing. And it's actually quite satisfying, but you can start really, really pale. If you don't like what you've done, if you leave it pale, you can then disguise it with something else. So let's carry on with the drawing. I tend to talk too much about rubbish. I'm quite new to the... Um, the video thing but because of all this not knowing whether we can open the gallery again and I was going to start hopefully doing my classes in our lovely classroom here in Glastonbury um, I may have to start thinking about doing something online with everybody um, lots of crafts and things and if I can set up some decent tutorials and uh, study groups um, so that we can actually work together and it will just help uh, help to keep everyone going, really. Myself and running my business and hopefully everybody else learning how to do something they didn't know how to do before and start creating something for themselves. So I'm adding some more colour here, some more cross hatching, just the depth. So again, the path the little, the little mushrooms are obviously in the foreground, so you're going to be able to see those. So you keep them quite pale. The top of these parts of the tree roots are going to be fairly pale still. But as they go down, you have to visualise that they're curved objects or slightly curved. They're going to be darker as they go into the, into the little crevices here. And there's going to be moss there. I've done some more of the foliage effect there, just up and down. You only need to do it like that initially. And then you can add a bit more depth. There's a little pebble there. And I want the pebble to look as though it's actually in the ground or in, in between these tree roots. So we make it a tiny bit darker. This again is just a foliage effect. There's no real detail to this. It's just really quite fun. I think anyone can do this sort of foliage effect on the ballpoint pen drawings. There we see. And the pebbles almost vanish but it doesn't matter because there's more pebbles and it's all about giving it a bit of depth and uh, contrast and so we'll keep going with this 
I do hope you don't get bored, but um, as I said, I'm very new to all of this, but hopefully I'll give you some helpful, useful tips. As I said, one of my favourite things to do with my ballpoint pen drawings is I usually scan them in as a black and white image so that I can use them for printing um, or for colouring books and things like that. And then once the image is finished in black and white, I can then add um, some watercolour to it. I don't add it in huge, great big wet washes. I usually just do it quite subtly. Because you've already put a lot of shading in your painting, your drawing, sorry, um, you don't need to apply huge quantities of watercolour. But uh, I may add a bit of colour to this when it's finished and perhaps I'll do a separate little film about that for you. So it's going to be quite dark down here. This is the inside of this tree root that's coming out. There we go, a little bit. And again, all I'm doing is just cross hatching well different directions with my pen strokes. The more you apply it, the darker it's going to come in that area. There we go. Now I'm going to add a bit more to the tree trunk, making sure this is still a little bit paler, but you're going to cover it anyway with some contrast. I don't normally draw this way up so my pen may lose its ink because it should be flowing down. But there's any way I could try and get to film it for you so that you can actually see what I'm doing. So, if you could only see how I've set this up, you'd probably really laugh. I tried to put the tripod into a jam jar actually so it would pop up on its own without the legs open. Goodness gracious, the things we do. And I'm trying to see this picture through <laughs> through the actual tripod, so I can't really see the, the picture I'm doing. But anyway, that's not your problem. Hopefully you can still see what I'm trying to achieve. So we've got this nice little dark spot here. Now the mushrooms stand out really quite well, but we want to put a bit of shading in because you don't want the mushrooms to look as though they're just sticks. You want to give them some depth again, so a bit of shading to the, so that you can visualise that the mushrooms are actually in there. There we go. So a bit of shading under the cap there, you see. That's just a little bit of cross hatching. Because I want to stay pale, I don't do lots of layers over it. Might do one or two, but not lots. Because it's darker further in, where the moss and what have you would be near the tree, we're going to just do those nice little up and down shapes that are supposed to look like foliage. There you go. And again, if you apply those over the top of each other, it'll start to make them darker. But it'll still have the rough texture feel. As if it might be moss or tiny little bits of leaf or shrub. Some textures. There we go, see? I'm just going slightly over the edge. I've actually got a nice little mount for this. So I've drawn a little line round to guide me. And if I go slightly over the edge, I know that the mount I'm going to put it in will actually fit. So this is quite nice. There you go. It's that little, I might put one or two blades of grass in. So that's just harder, press hard and just be quite casual with it. There we go. Just little strips of grass. More of the foliage effect. Now, as you can see, we're coming down here. This is the top of the tree root. So I'm just putting some little shapes in here. It's just like I want to give it a bark effect. Now in here, this is where the tree, one tree root here, the other one's here. So I'm just going to add a bit more dark. A few more cross hatchings across here, make it a bit darker. It's very, very difficult for me to actually see 
what I'm doing now. So I may pause the video shortly, but I'll just do a few more little bits so that you can understand what it is I'm trying to do. So we've got the caps of the mushrooms here. The mushrooms I'm going to keep quite pale still so that they really pop. But I'm just adding just some light strokes, which is like so, just light strokes, just to create a little bit of shading on the caps as well. My light source is from over this side, so it's paler here because there's some sunshine shining on them. But because we're also in sort of a wooded effect, I've got bits of light here because this is in the woods more so so you're going to have some light coming from that direction too which is not in the wood there'll be like a little field effect there it's a bit complicated so lighting is probably another discussion to, to have at a later stage but um, as you can see I think the door is looking as though it's set into the tree rather than sticking out of the tree and the window also is sort of resting on this tree root ledge there's a tight tiny sort of a ledge so it's been built onto that and again it will be darker here so that it looks as though the window is actually in the tree but this little area here should look as though the window will almost look as though it's resting on top of that which it more or less is so I will stop the video now and then you're not going to be too bored um, and I'm going to do some more of the detail because I'll be able to see it better and then I'll come back and do a second portion for you. See you soon.